So it was World Cities Day, and Ronak makes reference to, uh, I love the story about the, the, the uh, sort of the, the smart cuts, um, and one of your smart cuts is greening, uh, uh, making cities smart, uh, and that uh, full, uh, continues our storyboard of this morning to talk about uh, this thing called smart cities in an African context. So I'm going to stand here just for a moment um, and then give each of you a couple of minutes to talk about you know, what you see or regard as a smart city. How should we think about these things? Um, but I've got three questions for each of you. My first question is, what is your favorite city in the world? And why? Uh, my second question is, where did you grow up and what made it spectacular or unique? And my third question is, which I think is the proper question for this morning, is, uh, well, let me hold that the third question in limbo and ask you this. Is there such a thing as a model city that we could learn from in one of the 54 countries that we call African? Question one, favorite city. Question two, where did you grow up? Question three, model city. Uh, thank you for the invitation and thank you for the guests that came beforehand. So um, it's <laughs> relatively easy uh, in terms of favorite city. Uh, Rio de Janeiro is right up there for the fact that it struck me coming from South Africa how what inclusion means. And what I mean by that, it's a city where um, there's one language that is spoken, which is Portuguese, yet the shades of color is completely um, varied, uh, which was surprising for me coming from South Africa. And I was fascinated about the proximity between um, great disparities in wealth and how it played itself out on the beach with Haviana slippers, uh, that uh, you could come onto the beach and irrespective of your background, you were the same person on that beach. Lovely. Second question is, where did you grow up? I, and I, what made it unique, special? I, I and what up, made it bad? I, I grew up in Cape Town. Uh, what made it special was the fact that there was a plane to get out of it. Um, and, uh, um, that, uh, and that it was a really sweet, small space to incubate, call it a migrant uh, ethnic group in, 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 in South Africa, so I found that helpful. Um, it's it's um, problematic for me just because of its um, stubborn uh, legacy of separation that perpetuates itself. It just cannot be dismantled, and, and I struggle with that. So that, that's a big bugbear. And the, and the last thing about a city that... Um, Hang on to that one. Hang on okay, to that okay. one. We'll, okay. we'll come here. So I grew up in Durban, uh, and the throwaway joke there goes that the best thing to come out of Durban is the N3. Um, <laughs> okay, um. Bad humor. <laughs> this okay. will not be broadcast anywhere, ever. <laughs> Your first question is really difficult for me. And, well, and thanks, thanks. it's really cool to be here and not speak to a bunch of urbanists who is <laughs> often who I'm speaking to. Um, uh, because I am an urbanist and I, and I love so much about cities that I love very different things about different cities. Uh, but if I had to, can I do top three? My, my favorite tends to be where I am because I find something to love about almost any city I've spent time in. Uh, I love Joburg. I love Joburg for its messiness. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love Joburg for its messiness, its potential, its energy. And so there's a lot that I love about Joburg. Uh, prior to living here, I was living in Los Angeles. Also messy and contradictory, and I loved a lot about it. Uh, and then a third one, which answers the second question, is I was born in Nairobi. Mm. I, I wouldn't say that I, what do you say, grew up. I don't know if I, I'm still growing up. But <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> but, um, but I was born there, and uh, you can't beat the social life of Nairobi. You just okay. can't. Uh, cool. And I love that about Nairobi. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you for sharing your personal uh, backgrounds. Um, so those are your three sort of favorite cities. Um, what, uh, what was good? Or, uh, so you've given us the good about Nairobi. What's bad about Nairobi? Traffic. 
Um, traffic, traffic, traffic. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, traffic. Um, you know, I suppose with any places that are intense, you know, there are things that are great about it. So there's in intensity in diversity, in productivity, in entrepreneurialism, things that are just going on all of the time. Cities are productive in all sorts of positive ways, but cities also tend to be productive in very negative ways. So Nairobi can be dirty, Nairobi can be noisy, Nairobi can be... Um, a lot of the sprawl we've seen in a lot of cities that don't work very well, where things move out of the center into the periphery, which is partly what causes all the traffic, mm. uh, is also characteristic of Nairobi. So Nairobi by day is probably not my favorite place, but Nairobi by, ni Nairobi by night is absolutely stunning. <laughs> That's very cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I, would say, I would say that about Nairobi. Um, and maybe similarly about places like Los Angeles. So I love the diversity of cities. Uh, and if you read, you read people like Peter Hall and others who talk about cities and civilization, a lot of cities over time and why they've survived and why they've thrived has been about diversity, has been about the radical mix of people doing interesting and new things together. And that's a lot of what I love about cities. And these three that I've mentioned definitely do that. You know, they're vibrant, people are transacting, people are doing new things in different ways. Uh, and I think that excitement really gets me. Um, uh, given that I'm chairing the panel, I'm allowed to tell you how to answer. I don't want, to give, I don't want you to give me your reasoning. I just want you to give me the names. Uh, name the most impressive possibly model African city? I hate to say it, but right now, maybe Kigali. Kigali. Okay. Thresh? For myself, I, um, not to travel like Yeshi is, but um, for me, Johannesburg. Okay. Um, then, to put you on the spot, could you name a South African city that you think stands out? Johannesburg. Oh. And our work here is done. Uh, <laughs> have a wonderful weekend. <laughs> Enjoy the rugby. <laughs> uh, you wrote a really interesting article uh, which you shared with me yesterday um, uh, describing different places in the world and the challenges that they're wrestling with. Can we use that as a jump off point for, for this conversation? You want me to mention what just, that was about? Yeah, just talk us through it. Yeah, so I'm part of a global project. Spent a bit of time in Delhi. I think it was last week or the week before. I've lost track of time. And going through sort of, you know, your kind of bad neighborhoods in New Delhi and thinking about our experiences here and then some of the more positive parts of Delhi and some of the big developments, and there are huge developments happening there, and thinking again about what's happening here and our president's call for a new city and, you know, for IR and how that could transform cities. It really got one thinking about what works and doesn't work about cities and how we see cities and what we're trying to use cities for. Um, I, I was struck in Delhi about the kind of innovativity that could be used to develop big new developments, both in terms of innovative financing, the best tech, the greenest tech, you know, everything you could think of, for a city that still has people that are living in settlements that where people were displaced in 2002 for Commonwealth Games. Mm. And you've got people who now generationally are growing up in squalor in, in the very same city that's able to do all of these high-tech, very amazing things. And when you're there, it's easy to be critical of it until you remember that back home we're doing very similar because that could be the story of Joburg and the amazing things we're able to do and the very simple things we're not able to do. Um, and so David Everett and I, who are on this trip together, just began to reflect upon that from a political economy perspective. You know, what allows for this to happen? Um, and we chose to frame it in terms of this idea that... Um, Perhaps the idea that the challenges of a city and the challenges of poverty and inequality, and India and uh, South Africa, by the way, have very similar inequality profiles, mm. uh, is partly about how we see what the challenge of dealing with the poor is and, and, and why we deal with it in the way that we do. And if it's the idea that there's some minimum you can provide people and that's good enough because they have nothing, then you end up with what we have. Uh, if you're actually trying to solve four things that understand that people need opportunity, they need livelihood, they don't just need a basic you know, a free basic, you know, water, electricity, provision, or a free house. They need a lot more than that, and economies need to be able and have the openness to produce and provide more than that. Then I think you end up with where we are. So it was a bit of a, uh, I, I, I try to say I'm skeptical, not cynical, but since we're using the C word, it's a bit of a cynical piece, um, but I hope it's something that's going to provoke thinking about what cities could do better and differently, and I've definitely had ideas about that. 
And, and people like Tiresh have had amazing ideas about what cities could do differently. Yeah. So, well, shall we go to those brilliant ideas about what cities should... <laughs> You're on the spot. Sure. Well, well, uh, I guess she inflates that a little bit because I think that what I... what um, maybe, maybe just to frame and help understand why an architect is in a business school uh, may help, is that, um, that to talk about our profession and what we do is, is a little bit problematic. I think we have a history of serving a very particular class and we draw windows and we make things with aesthetic sensibility. And that when you occupy a, a place like South Africa in this time, we don't have the luxury to look at style. Um, and I think that we wanted to understand the politics around space and that we can't disassociate the spaces we occupy from the social, economic, and political system. So you find that a lot of the work that we do does uh, show a reading of those, those aspects through space. So what I do as an architect is I read our cities and present insights, um, which is what I'm uh, looking to contribute here, present some of the insights that I see taking place within the cities. So I, uh, very different to what was presented earlier, uh, where I, I see really big data presented at macro scales and how uh, big nations perform, I am interested to see how individual nationals, foreign nationals, perform in their doorstep, on their street, in their yards and rooms. So my uh, insights are usually embedded at a really small scale of the body of how someone occupies space, despite not wanting, not, not being welcome to be in here. And that tension that plays itself out, really not welcome, but I need to make economic livelihoods, like you're talking about, and have a social life beyond that, you find that tension, that pushing about trying to make uh, ends meet, there's some incredibly innovative and inventive moves that are made. So I, I bring some insights as to what that sophistication is. And, and, and there's a lot of empirical data that I've got for that. For example. Thank you. <laughs> you took my words. <laughs> for, for example, um, the, um, the, one of the questions that I saw in your, in your Q&A that was primed was um, something around um, a giving, talking about insights that one sees through the continent. And again, I, I take very little interest in what happens beyond South Africa's borders right now for reasons being that I think that South Africa is incredibly porous. You've got incredible uh, immigrant communities in here. And I'm interested about how uh, foreign communities um, wrestle with the city because what is incredible about it is that the invention is here in Johannesburg uh, because we've got a really um, a stifling regulatory framework. We've got a, a we're not welcoming to foreign nationals, mm. and what happens with that is that you find really interesting tensions about how, how someone needs to be two things: both visible to commerce and trade, but invisible to the authorities. And when you've got that tension playing itself out, you have one of the most amazing briefs for interesting cities. And what that, how that places it takes its takes shape is in neighborhoods like in downtown Johannesburg around the Ethiopian quarter where Ethiopian immigrants mm. have consolidated themselves to be a major economic force in the city. You're looking at uh, Somali neighborhoods like Mayfair where the reappropriating of um, private uh, uh, suburban and plots has created one of the most dynamic street lives you're going to see. So I, I get excited about mm. that. I, but this yeah. is not unique to, uh, to Johannesburg. And we, we find in city after city, uh, Little Italy uh, or Chinatown or um, in Sao Paulo, the Japanese quarter uh, and so on. So this is not unique. It's, it's not unique, but I think if we're talking about, if we looked at the indicators of uh, what our economic growth is like right now, and you're seeing where the agency rests in, there's a, it's not, it, it seems to be missing each other, that it's not South Africans that are taking up the, the driving seat in shaping the microeconomic growth, mm -hmm. it is foreigners that's doing that. And they're doing that with very little resources and very little support. And I, what I'm interested in is the again, the innovation that comes with it. So if I look at some of the Chinese communities that have set themselves up, uh, there was the, it, it didn't come with that level of friction um, it, within the cities. There was a host city that allowed that to happen. And right now we're in a really tough space where government's looking to clamp down. We mm. don't understand our land dynamics, so it means that it's, it's not welcome in, in many ways. Yeah, so. yeah.